Hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan. And I am Matthew Lucas. And we post a video every Friday. So why not press the subscription button and the alert button to be reminded each week when our next video comes up. And if you have a 60 second question for Stephen, we do a short every Monday answering your questions in 60 seconds or less. So if you've got a great question or just a question, put it in the comments below. And any plant that we mentioned in this video is in the text at the bottom of the video. So do just scroll down if you want to know exactly what we're covering today, Stephen, which is dogwoods again. A continuation of your, is it fair to say, obsession? Well, I hold the National Collection, so I guess it must be an obsession. So, yes, yeah, so last video was about the North American dogwoods, mm. or at least a few of them. Which I mean, bloom in? Sort of early to mid-spring. Yes. Now we're going to talk about the Asian dogwoods, and yes. most of the flowering varieties tend to flower as you get well into the early summer. So mm. they're the more or less the last of the flowering dogwoods to bloom. Mm. We'll also cover one or two other Asian dogwoods that aren't considered flowering dogwoods per mm. se but we're going to look at some very very interesting dogwoods uh, in a range of colors there you go well this isn't one of them this is actually in a pot that's for sale in your nursery well exactly you be so inclined yes if you need a plant of cornus cusa weavers weeping which is what this variety is uh, it's a lovely sort of semi pendulous dogwood which is an unusual form to find in them it's not long been available in Australia probably in last decade or so is about mm. all and it's still quite rare in the trade but for those who've got a comparatively small garden uh, you could do far worse than planting corners uh, kusa weavers weeping there you go but this isn't what we're talking about there are established fabulous examples yep. in and around the nursery let's go look at the first one all right what a good idea now what is this one how fantastic well this is corners capitata which is probably the most commonly grown dogwood in australian gardens yes because it comes from southern china yeah uh, and so therefore is a little bit more heat tolerant and uh, hardy than some of the more northern species of dogwood mm, mm. now cornus capitata is evergreen so you don't get all oh, foliage with okay. it which is a bit sad in a way but you get the beautiful creamy white flowers which it produces in uh, i'd say midsummer, summer yeah. uh, and then they're followed in the autumn by some really large red strawberry like fruit oh and in fact it's sometimes called a strawberry tree although mm. that is confusing with arbutus which we made an epic video about yeah. which we'll link yes <laughs> and why not indeed and i noticed the local birds love the fruit when it's in fruit so they don't last terribly long right they tend to be eaten rather quickly oh that's a shame because it yeah. would look beautiful I imagine. it does it looks lovely on the tree but I have to say, you can also eat it. Oh! So you could, in fact, um, use the Cornus fruit to make a dogwood jelly. Uh, wow. And so there you go. So capitata, so it's evergreen. Uh, it does look a bit frowsy straight after flowering because that's when it sheds any old leaves it wants to get rid of. Mm. So you get a fair few yellow leaves through it looking a bit scruffy. Mm. And it does have a matte green to the foliage, which means it doesn't stand out terribly well the rest of the year either. There you go. So full sun. Cool sun. Tough as nuts. Doesn't like hot winds particularly, particularly mm. in southern Australia where we get those really hot deserty winds in the summer. Yeah. But it's much more heat tolerant uh, and probably a wee bit more drought tolerant than the deciduous ones. Now, this one is from southern China. We're talking about Asiatic corners. So what's their range? Do you find them in Japan? Do you find yeah. them, how, what's the, the well, breadth? Uh, southern China's about it. I don't think mm. they go down any further. So I don't think you find them in Vietnam or anywhere like that yeah. or Thailand. There are a couple of dogwoods that come from Japan. So yes, yeah, so they're, they're sort of fairly generally uh, around the Asian area. Now, in the previous video, we did talk about that specific disease that affects dogwoods, which is? Anthracnose. Now, does that affect the Asiatic ones? No, or at least they seem to be pretty well immune to it or mm. they shuck it off. I'm not mm. quite sure how it works. Mm. But you've got to remember the anthracnose disease probably developed in China or somewhere in Asia. Mm. And when it got into North America where the dogwoods had no contact with it before, mm. they also have no resistance to it. And so therefore it's created all sorts of havoc with the North American dogwoods. Mm. So if you're in an area where you get anthracnose disease and you can grow some of these other Asian dogwoods, mm. you shouldn't have that problem. Well, we'll look at some others. So this one is the, the most Southern, which is kind of the toughest in terms of sun and dry. So yeah. let's look at some others that might be more suitable to European and North American climes. Well, we can do that. Let's go. All right. All right, now we're going to have a look at a dogwood that's not in the classic mould, but it's one of the world's great ornamental trees, and that's Cornus controversa, and in this case in its variegated form called variegata, funnily enough. 
and it's commonly known as the tabletop or wedding cake dogwood and its branches come out in flat layers this is only a baby so it's just producing its first layer but whilst i was in new zealand recently on an asa tour i saw a magnificent one in hortensia garden and I was stunned because it wasn't the silver foliage that I was used to seeing in Cornus controversa variegata. It was actually a gold variegated form. So I came home terribly excited and started to do some research, only to find that the golden variegated form was actually developed or found as a, as a mutant in New Zealand. And they've called it Golden Wedding, which is a fairly appropriate name. And as far as I know, it hasn't made its way outside of New Zealand because it doesn't show up in any of the literature on Cornuses. So Cornus controversa, very hard to get, has to be grafted, but if you can get it, the tabulated layered effect, as you can see in this imagery that we've got from New Zealand, is just stunning. So if you're looking for a really impressive small to medium feature tree, it would need a spot that's out of hot winds because uh, it would burn its foliage. But anywhere you can grow other dogwoods, you shouldn't have any trouble with the Cornus controversa types. Now, Stephen, this is a Cornus that at the moment is not doing much. No, it's basically green. It's just got green foliage. If we look really closely, we can see that there's berries starting to form, and we'll put a close-up in of that. This is Cornus officinalis. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two Cornuses in this group. Yes. And what they really look good at is doing the winter thing. So we've got some footage of it from uh, taken earlier in the year in the winter. Yes. And it has these remarkable little tiny clusters of yellow flowers all over the bare stems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminded me a bit of Circus in the the way the sort of the flowers emerge perhaps yes well a lot of winter flowering plants do have that sort of they do uh, yes but it was midwinter and it's bright yellow it's quite yeah, amazing it is the other thing about this group yeah. and as i said there's cornus mass the cornelian cherry from europe and this cornus officinalis they're almost indistinguishable one mm. flower slightly earlier than the other mm. and the bark has slightly different characteristics yeah. my gut feeling is they could end up being the one species one day but they get bright red berries in the summer which make a very good jelly in mm. fact i'm told it is the best jelly to have for gamey meat so mm -hmm. those of you out there shooting venison you might like to make some uh, cornelian cherry jelly it colors quite nicely in the autumn as well mm. and it's a picture and comparatively hardy corners. So where's this one from? Well, this one comes from China mm. and it's fairly common around China. So it grows over quite a, a broad range. Mm. And of course, it's very close relative, grows all through Europe. Uh, it's very popular in Ukraine, uh, all through sort of middle Europe as a fruit tree. So it's grown oh. particularly for its berries. Really? Yeah. There you go. What a fantastic cornice. Yes. Not doing much now, but has a lot to offer. Oh yes. And it's definitely a picturesque and attractive small tree. On to the next. Let's go. We're now standing in front of a very impressive specimen of Cornus. And what a beautiful habit. Oh, it is goodness. a gorgeous tree. Yeah. Now this one, and there's a close up of its flower. Yes. Which I bought originally as Cornus angustata. Yes. Now it's had some problems with its name, or at least the pundits have had some problem with its name. And so I, for a long time, was told it was Cornus cusa angustifolia and that's what i assumed it probably was because it has the nice pointy bracts that you expect of cornus cusa types there's a pink one called heartthrob but the q site suggests that it's actually a form of cornus capitata which is the other one we've just finished filming mm -hmm. so it doesn't have the rounded petals i was going to say what's the difference yeah it has the much pointier petals yeah it has a glossier foliage yeah um and it's solidly evergreen like Capitata, but apart from being evergreen, mm. uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot in common with Capitata. Uh, so if I had my way of uh, <laughs> naming the <laughs> If you ruled the world. If I did rule the world, I would probably class it as a form of Cornus Cusa. But if it's around the trade, it might well be Cornus Capitata subspecies Angustata. What a beautiful tree. Mm. Would it get much bigger than that? No, that tree is probably now 15 or 20 years old. Mm. It's probably getting on towards full size don't think you'll see it much bigger than that and I think it's probably one of the best of the cornices for late season mm. and in fact it's the very last of my flowering dogwoods what it mm. classed as flowering ones like that mm. that does flower so we're now after Christmas we're actually in new year so we're getting into full summer yeah and it's just coming into its peak flowering now it'll still be in flower for another four to six weeks so almost towards the end of summer it will still be in bloom
Beautiful and the perfect tree for a smaller garden. Yep, ideal. And of course, being evergreen uh, and reasonably upright, it could well be a nice alternative to some of the rubbish that people are planting to hide their neighbours from them. Now, in the last Corners video, we did go to some lengths about the fact that this is a bract and the flower is the bit yeah, in the middle. Yeah, the bit in the middle. Yeah, so that's how you can understand why the flowers last so long because the bract is a modified leaf, so it's much heavier in texture. Yeah. Uh, and so therefore is less likely to get knocked about by the weather. There you go. Well, we're going to say goodbye to that, which is a stunning specimen and on to the next. All right. Now, this is a perfect specimen of Cornus Kusa, uh, the classical Asian dogwood. It grows in Japan and in China. Some people see them as separate uh, subspecies of the one, one species. But anyhow, Cornus Kusa is a fabulous plant. And if it's got the right climate and the right aspect and enough space to show itself off, you can see by these images just how exquisitely beautiful it is. All right, now here we have another example of an Asian dogwood, but in this case, a hybrid yes. one. Yes. Which was bred in England, uh, and it's a cross between Cornus capitata, the classical evergreen one, mm -hmm. and Cornus cusa, which is one of the deciduous Asian species. Right. And it's called Norman Haddon. And it has lovely creamy flowers that often get a little bit of pink in them as they age. And being a cross between an evergreen and a deciduous one... It is... Semi-evergreen. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> or semi-deciduous, depending on whether you're a pessimist or an, or an optimist. I'm not yes. quite sure how that works. <laughs> now, we've got a couple of stills of an even superior form than this, mm. which has larger flowers, gets some serious pink in the flowers as it ages. Mm. Uh, and it was a seedling that was found in the Dandenong Ranges here in Victoria. Ah. Uh, and it was named after the man who found it. So it's Cornus Eric Jennett. Now, Eric Jennett found it as a seedling in his garden. Its flowers are bigger. It seems to be more floriferous. So mm. it seems to be a really heavy bloomer. Yeah. And I think uh, I think we've actually been on a winner with this one. So once Eric Jennett becomes a little bit more available, mm. I think it's one of those dogwoods that's going to find its place in Australian horticulture, certainly. Mm. And I'm rather hoping that one day or another, somebody will pick it up overseas and run with it there as well. There you go. Well, from this one, on to the next. Why not? Well, we have ended where we've begun, Stephen, with the... Weeping what, Cornus Cusa, uh, the Weaver's weeping. weeping. Beautiful. And it's a lovely little tree. I have loved this whole journey through the Asiatic Cornus. So there are evergreen and deciduous yes. from Asia of Cornus. And there are some that have the the flowery bits, the flowery bracts, yeah. and there are others that are not classed as flowering dogwoods, although they get flowers. And so, yes, pretty well all of the different types of cornices are in fact represented in Asia. Mm. And this has been a somewhat cursory glance at them considering how big the genus is, but yes. nonetheless, we've seen, I guess, the, the major important types of cornice from Asia. And if you're able to grow both as you are, you basically will get flowers from late winter, early spring, all the way through almost to the end of summer. Yes. And of course, some of the corners have coloured autumn foliage, others have attractive berries. And of course, there are those corners that have lovely coloured stems in the winter as well. And that other one that blooms in midwinter. Yeah, yes, exactly. The corners officinalis or corners mass, whichever one you've got availability for, they are all worthwhile growing. There you go. Well, thank you keeper of the Corners Collection of Australia. <laughs> and this is just a taste. Stephen just pointed out to me one from Guatemala, which yeah. looks like a viburnum. It's incredible. Yeah, so Maybe 44 species cultivars and varieties later, I'm still collecting. Well, we have to see if we can figure out how to work a story around the other ones. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Anyway, if you want to know what we're doing next week, do hit subscribe. We post every Friday. And if you've got a 60 second question for Stephen. Yes post it because I'll have a crack at answering any of your questions so that you get some personal service. So remember every plant that we've covered will be in the list below in the copy underneath this video so do check that out and we look forward to seeing you next week. Goodbye all.